Today, we're cruising at 30,000 feet, on our way to Salt Lake City, Utah. We'll fly the Lee 5 arrival, then be vectored to the ILS for runway 16 left. Before descending on the arrival, we can review it, checking notes, and making sure any crossing restrictions are in the FMC. For instance, there's an expect flight level 190 at Spain. We check the rest of the arrival in the FMC, matches the chart. Next, we can set up and review the ILS approach. We use the briefing strip, first setting the ILS frequency, 109.5. Moving right, we next set the final approach course, 164 degrees, twice on the MCP. We can check the final approach fix altitude and add a 2 mile ring around the fix for situational awareness. We can also set an approach reference speed for flaps 30 and set auto brakes to 2 so it'll be a 30 and 2. The minimums are 4,427 feet, which we can now set. We also look at the airport diagram and familiarize ourselves with the anticipated taxi route and any hotspots or runway crossing we might have after landing. We can get the runway length on the airport information page and use that to set the HUD. While setting up, ensure someone is managing the aircraft. For instance, we now require engine heat on. The approach brief starts with verbalizing threats during the approach and steps to mitigate those. On this approach, threats would certainly include high terrain, so to mitigate that threat, the pilots would ensure terrain mode is selected. Let's listen to the rest of the brief. We're expecting the ILS to runway 16 left, 11-1, 4th October, 2019, with an effective date of 10th of October. Frequency 109.5. Inbound course of 164 degrees. Yip at 6,000. Decision altitude is 4,427 feet. The brief is a great barrier to catch errors. Here the mints were set incorrectly by a few feet, but was caught and fixed during the brief. The touchdown is at 4,227 feet. MSA is 11,000 to the north. 12,700 between 050 and 230 radials, and 8,600 to the west. The highest obstacle is to the northeast of the airport. If we go missed, we'll climb to 10,000 feet, and proceed to Fairfield, where we'll hold as published. We need an RVR of 1,800 feet, or half a mile visibility, the weather is better than that. The runway is 12,002 feet long, longer than our landing assessment. It'll be a right turnoff, with no runways to cross, or hotspots. Any questions are discussed, wrapping up the brief. Returning to the arrival, we're now passing Fairfield, and descending using VNAV, to 11,000 feet. In front of us, we can now see the Bingham Canyon Mine, and Open Pit Copper Mine on the Ochre Mountains. The mine, known more commonly by locals as the Kennecott Copper Mine, is the largest man-made excavation and deepest open pit mine in the world. After passing a beam the airport, we're given a descent to 7,500 feet. Level change is selected to give us an idle thrust descent.
We're now cleared to tomb, it still has an above 9,000 feet entry in the FMC, which we'll delete, as we've been cleared to a lower altitude. We've descended using VNAV path, however once the final approach fix becomes the next point, we select approach mode.
We've now flown the arrival and ILS, and landed on 16 left. We hope you enjoyed, if so please like and subscribe, and we look forward to next time, when we learn more about the 737. Thank you.